Hello and good evening. Welcome to Tansim August uh, Special Edition 2020 and welcome to the studio of Tansim August located at Hautzwei. This is where we open every evening and this is where we close the party every evening. That's how it is now. I want to tell you a few words about today's program before we start. Um, at 8.30 we will have Meet the Artist. We will meet Faith Riskol, who will publish her new audio work. Uh, it's part of her guided choreographies for the living and the dead. And she will also join us live from LA after the audio. At 10 o'clock, we will meet another artist. Uh, Louis Le Cavalier in Motion is a film um, that will be broadcasted unfortunately only in Germany, I have to say. This is due to some copyright issues, so we are very sorry about that. Uh, the film will be in English and French, uh, and it will be subtitled in English. Um, so this will start at 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, but today, before we dive into today's program, I would like to invite a very special guest to join me straight from London. Um, John Z. D., Artistic Director of Breaking Convention, an Associated Artist uh, at Sadler's Wells in London. Welcome. Hey, how are you uh, doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Excellent. I'm really, really good. Um, I'm enjoying being stuck inside, so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> well, I'm stuck in the studio, uh, but I'm happy to see <laughs> you and, and, and have a little chat with you. Um, nice. So um, your festival, Breaking Convention, should have been in May. So unfortunately, we couldn't do it, you know, um, but we did do it. We ended up doing it online and we had to respond really quickly to the situation because um, I guess lockdown, after, when lockdown happened, we had about six weeks to, to plan it, but it was really straightforward. We knew what we were doing with the old school stuff um, and we figured that it would be a nice, memorable um, example of what we've done in the past. Hmm. Um, and also I did a new little video piece that mm -hmm. um, st stuck on the beginning of that, that was fun. Right. Yeah, we were talking about a little bit uh, before when we met that um, we are a little bit um, recreating our uh, work, work uh, descriptions, doing new things. Um, I mean, you're an artist yourself, so all through the years that you have been the artistic director of the festival, you also kept doing your own work. And this is yes. why you're here today also, because um, you have made a beautiful film. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Would you like to um, tell us about it? Our Bodies Back is the title of it. Our Bodies Back. Um, it, was, um, it was influenced by uh, seeing the George Floyd's murder. And I was absolutely freaking out at the time. Um, and I just lost all sense of my normal code switching routine that I usually go through as a black artist that works in these big, um, largely white, high art institutions. Do you know what I mean? No. Um, and I, I got into a big conversation with um, Alistair Spaulding and I was just talking to him about a lot of the injustices that we as black people face not only in the bigger picture, but also within our um, everyday lives, our, our, the microaggressions, um, the, mm. the problems in the workplace. But anyway, um, after talking about that stuff, um, Alistair basically called me the next day and just said, Johnsy, um, mm. I think you should make a film or do something about mm. this. Mm. And I was just so excited. Um, and yeah, I just got on with it, basically. It was very easy to do. Um, I always knew that I wanted to work with poetry. Um, it was also really important to get that connection. Because as you know, 
Um, I'm an MC, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the MC in me just, it's always trying to get out. It's this coming somehow, out. Even now. within the context of dance, you know? <laughs> but um, it was a real pleasure to work with Jessica Care Moore, who's an artist that I've toured with, you know, like 25 years ago. Mm. Maybe longer than that. Yeah, 95 we first started working together. So it was really good to be able to just come around full circle. She's very interested in the idea of choreo poetry and mm-hmm. allowing her words to be inside bodies. Mm-hmm. So her piece, We Want Our Bodies Back, which is um, influenced by um, what happened to Sandra Bland, um, Brianna Taylor and many other black women. Um, and it's a demand what her, her poetry is. Um, and I wanted to do it in black and white because I wanted to look at the polarity that we're existing in right now. The polar the polarization is probably one of the the, the big sicknesses we have in society right now. Um, so I wanted to reflect that by doing it in monochrome. But um, and also, yeah, it was fun because it was um, remote, um, and the idea of working with um, cameramen and dancers via WhatsApp is just such a beautiful, new, inventive way of collaboration, which, um, you know, I think is exciting and, and I'm really happy with what we ended up with. Hmm. Wow. Would you like us to look at the, the film now and then come back and talk a little more? Yes, that's a good <laughs> idea. Let's go for the film. If black women could be cut down, no, removed gently from American terrorism, who would break our fall? Which direction would we travel to feel safe, wild as the wind? If we could turn in this skin, these sharpened bones, this brain full of power and history, who would we resemble? Invisible doesn't come in black. How many nervous breakdowns? How many funeral black dresses? How many fibroids? How many nooses? How many of our bodies must be raped, cut into pieces, and thrown inside garbage bags buried? How many of us blossom a beautiful tree of life and pray their pride isn't cut down the middle, reduced to trunks, where a close friend doesn't die, climbing their limbs, attempting to simply grow outside this pretty soil they were planted, I put a spell on you. Holly Hobby ovens, Girl Scout cookies, and Barbie dolls. Don't prepare our revolutionary daughters born with capes and wings to have a pig's knee pushed into their backs. Girls raised by wolves taught to disappear, to be quiet, to not talk about it. How much black breath is allowed space in the state of Texas, a place that has sucked the life out of countless, miscounted, uncounted, brown, poor women die here. I got life. Sandra Bland got the death penalty for a traffic stop. Her body was 28 years young. How to make sense of our bodies. Bodies Bodies. smoked by cigarettes. Bodies smoked out their own neighborhoods. Bodies with abandoned lungs and hearts. Bodies mistaken for women when they are still girls. How do we construct a survival guide, a poem for our daughters' bodies without throwing up our breakfast? How do our mothers' bodies not implode as they're telling our sons to comply, to not speak, to keep their heads down, to allow their bodies to be dragged by racist police? Jim Crow ain't never flown with this much wingspan. Eagles running for safety now. For the reach is deep in Southern and Midwest. Shadow of the East, lands in the West. Texas, you will always be Mexico in denial. Poet Ron Allen asked for his body back in 1996, and we are still waiting. We want our bodies back. We want our bodies back. We want our bodies back. We want the return to mothers without blood, without brains exposed, without humiliation, without bruises, without glass, without fire. We want our bodies back. We want our cities back. We want our culture back. We want our land back. We want our streets back. We want our freedom. We want our justice. We want our bodies back. We want our bodies back. We want them wrapped in white silk. We want them paraded around the White House. We want these flags you stand up for at baseball games and half mass. We want national holidays to honor our bodies, our knees, our prayers, our ears, our genitals, our eyes, our fingers, our feet. We want 21 gun salutes when we enter a room. We want our bodies back. We want them anointed in oils. We want them worn around your neck. We want them remembered. We want them worship on Sunday. We want our magic you try to model. We want our essence you attempt to steal. We want our elegance, our sex, our walk, our cool, our recipes, our intelligence, our science, our stars, our history. 
I want my Moroccan nose. I want my holy water press. I want my Maasai legs. I want my alien arms. I want my Ivy Coast mouth. I want our breath back. I want our time back. I want your foot off our girls' backs. I want all your badges back. I want you to evaporate into dust like swatted moths. Don't cut me down from the noose. Let my legs dangle for the devil. What a spectacular magic show. Why you turn the cameras off? Why you turn the cameras off? This is a simple ballet. You got front row. This is your venue. This cell, this home is no one's home. It's no place for a woman to die. You probably never heard of Judith Jameson, Catherine Dunham. Oh, we know how to get our legs in the air. We know how to elevate, use our bodies to tell a story, a middle passage of survivals, of lynchings. You have always left our bodies under your control. Don't you touch me. Don't you take me down. Don't touch my body. Don't touch my music. Don't touch my patience. Don't touch my car door. Don't come near my window. Don't talk to me in that tone. This body of work got work to do. I'm resurrecting my body in new forms daily. Watch for me in your deepest sleep. Black is the color of my true love's hair. Listen for my songs. Watch for my walk. Listen for my voice. My black girl attitude. Watch my body resist your death traps. Watch me rise. Watch my rebirth. Watch us rise up. Watch us rise up from this new Jim Crow and these new unspoken apartheid laws. We want our bodies back. We want our bodies back. We will take them, protect them, remember them, remind you, remember you. Sandra Bland, Rihanna Taylor, we will never forget your brown body. Your mind, your pride, your spirit, your love, your vow to do God's work. We want your drive from Illinois to Waller County back. We want all our daughters back, and we want them back now. That's powerful poetry, powerful yeah. images. You know, when, when we saw this, was immediately the first thing was like, can we still bring you to this year's festival somehow, just to get this, to, to have for our audiences the possibility to see this work, because it just speaks for itself, and it's such a strong voice um, that we hear in it. Mm. Yeah, literally, it's a strong voice. Jessica Caremore, um she won its showtime at the Apollo in New York like five times in a row in the mid 90s. Um, and she's been just hard at it, man. She's got her own um, book publishing company and stuff, more back Black Press. Um, and she's just a really strong, independent Black woman. And um, I think right now there's just so much polarization in relation to. To, to all types of stuff, but in this particular instance, this is an ode to the most important people in my life, my mother, my sister, my wife, my daughter, you know? Um, and it's a demand, it's a demand for justice, as I said before. So I feel really close to the piece. Um, but at the same time, as a man, there is a bit of distance as well, you know? Um, but what was important was making sure that all of the women who danced in the piece, that they had their own space to work with the piece and to interpret the poem themselves um, and to bring their experience to it. Um, we have a making of a video as well that I'll encourage you to go check out and you can really get under the skin of the, the um, artists involved. Hmm. Right, and these links can be found in at the at the Sadler's Wells uh, online stage, I That's guess. Right. Good. Well, uh, Chonsi, thank you so much for jumping in in the last moment. I mean, it was just like a couple of phone calls, and here you are with us today with this beautiful work. Um, where do we go from here? I'm, I'm happy you said there is maybe some takeaways from this time of, of isolation and working with different modes. We are reaching out for new audiences through this media, even they might not be, they are, we are building those audiences now and uh, way into the future. And it allows us to connect like this. This is already something, huh? To keep I in think mind. It's beautiful. I hmm. think it's beautiful that we 
adjust, you know, mm. that as a species, we adapt <laughs> to change, yeah? <laughs> and that's how we're going to survive, you know what I mean? So mm. dance is still alive, alive and kicking. Mm. Lovely to hear that. And so is poetry, which actually brought yes. us, I think poetry brought us together a long time ago. Uh, it was oh, Aero really? Aeroplane Man, your own um, performance, which is also poetry and choreography together. Um, yes. So thank you so much for joining us today. And one day we will meet again and can hug. So I want a real hug. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Till then, stay yeah. safe and keep up the good work. Much it's, love. Yeah, good to Thank see you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. So, then um, I would like to talk about the artist that we will meet next. So, uh, Faye Triscoll is an American artist and performer and performance maker who often creates immersive worlds. This means that she usually narrows the gap between the audience and the performers and brings us into the same space and rubs our skins together and makes us sing and makes us feel the vibes and sense each other's bodies in the same space. So what a hard time uh, this might be for her, but instead, she has turned this into an investigation into something else. Uh, face works have been presented in America, in Brooklyn Academy of Music, in Venice Biennale, Festi Festival de Autom in Paris, Melbourne Festival all over the world, just to mention a few places. Um, of course, we are extremely sorry that we could not have her here live this year but we are, she has done incredible work and incredible audio choreography for you to enjoy and get to know her a little bit uh, despite this isolation. Um, Faye Trisco's um, first solo museo exhibition was not long time ago. It actually opened in the Walker Arts Center last February, only unfortunately to close quite uh, shortly after. Um, and then the last part of Trilogy, which was supposed to be with us uh, this year, of course, thanks to you for coming, is something that we will discuss with her later. The whole massive work that she has done with, with three-part three um, performance work. Um, and today we will present, as I said, her latest audio work uh, of the series called Guided Choreography for the Living and the Dead. Um, we have a little bit of time, but I will, I will take you through um, the motions now a little bit, and then you can take a little rest, and we go online at 8.30. Um, so tonight, uh, Faye Triscoll invites you to this remote but intimate audio experience. She will guide you into a private dance, if you wish, it will be a 13-minute long uh, uh, journey. And after that, we come back to the studio. And actually, Faye will join us live from Los Angeles. So now, I will give you the instructions that are written by the artist herself. So please, at before 8.30, you have a little bit of time to do this. Find a quiet and comfortable place, maybe somewhere where you can lie down. Put on your headphones to get the full experience. And allow this 15 minutes for this shared journey with the artist Faye Driscoll. And we will be back in about nine minutes, eight and a half minutes. So find the comfortable place and enjoy the next piece.
hello and welcome back to the studio. Just a short reminder for those who joined us now. Um, we have instructions from Faye Driscoll um, and I would like to read them to you before we start. So, please find a quiet and comfortable place to listen, even if you wish to lie down. Put on your headphones and allow, allow the next minutes for this shared journey with the artist Faye Triscoll. So, hope you're ready. We certainly are. Enjoy it. Make yourself really comfortable. You can rest back in your seat or lay down and bring your focus away from evaluating things visually and come inside. So you can close your eyes or keep a soft focus. And I want you to go to your softest, softest place. Imagine that every part of you is being held. And you are the tiniest, tiniest little bunny rabbit. And you're melting and melting and melting until you're just a big old softy. And listen, listen up. I am waiting. I am waiting for you and I am ready and I would really like to hear you. So take several long, slow, deep breaths. I want to give you my crown, my leadership, the top part of my head, the part that thinks it's so in charge. Come on, come on in and boss me around. Take my king, my daddy, my dictator. Take my king, my queen, <laughs> my queen. I'm giving that to you. Can you take it? And you are letting go of all that static. All the stuff you think you've got to pay attention to, worry, 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 worry about. Go ahead and breathe in through your nose and out through your nose or mouth and let your stomach expand and feel your guts, your guts, your instincts, your impulses, your deep inner knowing and twist it up, let it go, wrench it out, give it to me, come on, come on, give it all to me, twist me, hold me, squeeze me, come on, take it, come on, take it, moving to the top of your head, to your crown, take my thoughts, my butt, guts, asshole, pussy, dick and balls and out your eyes and bring your attention to your feet. Observing the sensations in your feet up out your eyeballs and you might wiggle your toes a little bit and then up out your gaze and let it go. Come on, let me in. Come on and shift it. Shift the frame, the lens, take the optics, take it. Go ahead, go ahead and expand your lungs 
all the way up to your shoulders and take my grief, push it, and your lungs and your left chest with that weird pain in your heart and your stomach and ow, what do I do? What do I do with this? And when you're ready, you allow your feet to dissolve in your mind's eye and you move your attention up to your ankles, calves, and knees and you feel them. Take me. Come on into my tired body. Come on. Make me do what you want all day long. Come on, give it to me. And now you feel yourself returning and locomoting and your armpits and your face and your personality and you let it go and take it. Take my personality. You can have it. Go ahead. Come on. Take my face. Come on. Take my face. Help me face it. Turn me around and grab me by the shoulders and make me face it. Grab me by the shoulders and turn me around and make me face it. How do I face it? How do I face it? And observe the sensations you are experiencing throughout your legs, breathing in and out all the way to your fingernails and through your pride and pull the dependency down into your anus. Pull the dependency down into your anus and perhaps you don't feel anything at all and that's fine too. And perhaps you don't feel anything at all and that's fine too. Just allow yourself to feel the sensation of not feeling anything. And when you're ready, you allow your feet to dissolve in your mind's eye and you move your attention up to your throat. Let me hear it. Come on, help me speak it. Take my voice, take my speech, take my words and my speech. Help me say it. Speak through me. Come on, come into my mouth. Feel your nipples, feel your mouth. And then on the next out breath, you shift your focus and you bring your awareness into your arms. And you put your head and your hands and you weep in the bathroom at the dance festival. You put your head in your hands and you weep in the bathroom at the dance festival. Your arms, your arms, your arms, your arms. Come into my arms. Come on, grab me and text me. Come on, take it. Take me. All the ways I hold myself, all the ways I hold you back from me, just let me in. Take it, come on, I'm ready. I don't know how to give myself to you, but I want you to take me. And then on the next out breath, you bring your attention to your scalp and your head and your face and your eyes and your gaze and your mouth and your fear and your pussy, dick and balls. And you move your attention to the sensations in your pelvis and you go deep, up, up, up inside your pelvis and you feel how you're still alive. You feel that feeling that you are still alive and you take my awakenings. Come on, take them. Take my private parts. Take them. Come on, make them full and alive and pulsing and take my shame and your trauma and focus on your stomach and all the internal organs here and take the digestion and my processing and the bullshit and bullshit. Let me see you. Let me know you. Come on, come, come, come on. Help me with what I remember and what I forget. Help me with what I remember and what I forget. And then on the next out breath, You bring your attention to your scalp and your head and your face and you mess it up. Take my private parts. Come on, take them. Take them, make them full and alive. Take my shame. Take my processing and digestion and the bullshit and let me see you. Come on. Come on. And is there anywhere where you have some tension? 
where you feel the sensations of tightness or rigidity or holding. Notice your shoulders moving along with your breath and on the next out breath, let me hold you. Let me hold your fatigue, your fatigue, your fatigue, your fatigue. Lean into your liver and push your elbows and your wrists and your shoulders and push into your arms and come into my arms. Come on, come on, pound on my chest. Pound me down. Come on, pound me down. Let me hold you and grab you and text you and let me feel you pounding and pounding inside me and my heart. Take it. Take my broken ass, broken ass, broken ass, broken ass, broken ass. Come on, squeeze it. Feel the blood moving. Feel it moving into all your bruises. And notice the shoulders moving along with the breath. And on the next out breath, let me please receive you. And feel your kidneys and give me your projections and your stories breathing in and out all the way to your fingernails and take my pride in the inside of your mouth and your eyes, your eyes, your eyes. And feel the hairs on your skin and your tongue and let me hold your fatigue, your fatigue, your fatigue, your fatigue. Come on over here and lay down. Lean into my liver and make me believe it. I can't believe it. And make me believe it. I, somehow I can't believe it. And give me your elbows and your wrists and your shoulders and bring your awareness to your chest and your heart region and notice your heart beating and pound on my chest. Pound and pound and pound me down. And come on, come on, hold me and grab me and slap me and text me and let me feel you pounding inside me in my heart. Take it. Take my broken ass, broken ass, broken ass, broken ass heart. Come on, come on. Feel your blood twisted up. Let it go. And now let your attention expand to include the entire body as a whole. And you scream and you cry and you curl into a little ball and forget and you shake and you get confused and you think you're losing your mind and you feel pleasure. And I miss you. 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 You just let it just, you just let it just. You just let it just, and you come into your guts and your crown and your dick and your pussy and your balls and your lungs and your veins, and you come into your viscous, viscous, your viscous, 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 and you come on in, come on. And as you come to the end of this practice, you take a full deep breath and you take in all the energy of this practice and you exhale fully. And when you're ready, you open your eyes and you return your attention to the present moment. And you come on. Come on in. Will you fucking come here? So we have just heard the latest audio work of the series called Guided Choreography for the Living and the Dead. Welcome, Faye Triscoll. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you. Hello. Hi. How is it going? Hi. It's going OK. Yeah. Yeah, it's going fine. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, how are you? Well, I just, um, yeah. Listening to that and diving into it, you just don't want to kind of come back. You just want to linger <laughs> on in that kind of like 
the power mm. of the word and the audio and the, or the way your voice just turns into a whole world in itself, you know. It's just kind of want to stay there mm. for a while. Yeah. Let's just stay there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's not be in this reality. <laughs> exactly. Um. So this is a yeah. series that you, you've been working on. Um, can you tell a little bit when and how that started? Yeah. Um, so it started about, I, I guess, about a year ago. Um, I actually started a personal practice of, you know, in I think in, as dance makers, we're quite familiar with this idea of a guided body scan. Mm -hmm. And we're often um, taking, you know, performers are often taking very complex directions from me that are often impossible tasks. <laughs> and you're using your voice to move the bodies and the bodies are doing something and then you're responding to that. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going and have been going through a lot of like um, personal loss. And so I was actually doing this practice for myself mm -hmm. to think about um how I could communicate with those I would lost was had lost and then also to communicate with myself and my own body because I had the sense that I had almost left my body hmm. and so I was thinking about embodiment and actually the complexity of embodiment and the complexity of self and how we aren't just um one thing um and to feel a hand or to feel a part of your body in a really deep way is to actually enter a, a kind of a, a space of a quite unknown, of unnameability, to be deeply in sensation. And so around that time, I was also starting to work on this exhibition with the Walker Art Center. And so I ended up creating a series of audio works for that exhibition um, in which the audience listened, or the, the gallery goer would listen to the pieces hmm. inside a gallery with other other people and would kind of be in this intimacy with my voice and these strange directions and then would also be asked to asked to move and would then be moving in some choreography together like a kind of tableau vivant um, so and then when covid happened it seemed in a way that these pieces had been strangely made also for this time, this time of disembodiment. Um, and I think that the voice is a way, you know, we're so visually overstimulated. So the voice is this ancient technology from which we can sort of sense and feel and know a lot about what's happening for someone, um, you know, through the vagal nerve. Um, it's why we can, you know, listen to a, love, a loved one's voice and quite and know what's happening for them or that something's off. Hmm. So, so, and then of course, disappointed to not be with you, but uh, <laughs> we are yeah. improvising and finding ways to be together. And um, I, I think taking people away from their screens and into an oral experience became interesting to me. Hmm. I think it's really lovely because it's just, uh it's kind of a trip into the unknown for a lot of people, because as you said, the dancers are quite used to these kind of techniques, um, but maybe not for everyone to uh, think that this is also something that it's, it's part of uh, our art form. <laughs> In a way, it's something that is not visible, but something that everybody can, through this kind of audio engagement, can experience in themselves. Um, and I think that's really enriching yeah. uh, the spectatorship um, of our audiences. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the sensation of a bit of disorientation, of too much at once, of moving from your toes to your eyeballs to your <laughs> genitals, <laughs> is is one that I think that the, in dance practice we're often dealing with this. Mm level of dynamic and complexity, but that also as a viewer inside one of my live shows, you might feel yourself pulled in multiple directions um, and kind of having this internal dance of perception while witnessing 
the performance. And so this is kind of doing that. It's giving you the dance and also allowing you to perceive that in that way, perhaps. Or maybe you're just anxious while you're listening to it. I don't know. <laughs> or confused. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, as a, uh, as a work, it just seems to perfectly continue your work before. I mean, it's like it, it mm -hmm. is dealing with the same issue of like, where is the, where is the, 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 the gap between the performer and, and, and the audience? And where is the performance? Where is it located? In between us, exactly. here and there. And I mean, it, ra it raises the same question that you have been dealing with. I, as I mm -hmm. think, as long as I have known your work, um, which might yeah. not be from the very beginning, but you've always been involved with this, like, where is it? Where is that? When does it turn into my experience of what you are proposing? And when does it, and how do they communicate mm -hmm. in, inside the, 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 the artwork? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I've been interested in this kind of, you know, this morph between one familiar thing to another familiar thing and this unidentifiable space that emerges between where you're neither in one nor the other um, and you're kind of left in a question, therefore. And um, yeah, I think that's really well put. I, I did this practice in creating a duet with Jesse Zaret um, where we would stand in front of each other and for hours and we would try to become the other person and we, we became very strange and like laughed hysterically and um, but as we did this we found that as I tried to become him and he tried to become me there was this third space between us that emerged that was neither him nor me and so we ended up calling that practice chatting. We called that character chat and we called it chatting. <laughs> and so I think that in, in a lot of my pieces, especially, especially in the Thank You For Coming trilogy, which is sort of the last seven to eight years of my work, I've been really working on chatting with the audience, sort of creating that third space, um, like you say, Verve, and pulling that out so it becomes something actually palpable and is really this question of how we are making our world together um, and how do we feel that we are in, in some sort of uh, participation mm. in, this, in this world. Mm. You know, the talk has kind of going, gone from us being spectators to being witnessing something and then we are participating. And I feel like mm. in your work, all of those things were always there in different ways. In, that it's, it's actually like the same thing we are talking about, but from different angles. Um, that mm -hmm. even if you are lying down and hearing the voice, you, you, you are participating. Even if you didn't do anything, you, you were already participating. You're already a, a, a spectator or something. So I find this very interesting that it's kind of like putting together all these kind of like critical notions or um, different mm -hmm. definitions of what the audience is doing together and playing around with them and stretching them into different directions. But it's also stretching mm -hmm. the part of the performer. Mm. Because they also have mm. to be willing to go in, into this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned yeah. um, your quote, masterpiece. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It's <laughs> a trilogy. I have read. It's called Masterpiece. That's always I what agree. I call it. I always, I always say that. <laughs> that's, my that's my Thank privilege. You. My privilege to Aww. say it. Because it really is. It's, it's, it's a monumental work, mm. I have to say. Um, and we were thinking before that we would talk about it because it's such a, I mean, you started 2012. Yes. Yeah. To work that's on when this. I begin the process. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's like a massive amount of work, a massive amount of thinking and thinking in different, uh, contexts. Uh, the first one, uh, thank you for coming at the dance, which was 2014. Um, yeah. It was the first piece of yours that I saw, um, and um, 
I remember being, uh, as you said, co a little confused, not knowing what I, how I would like to be in it um, as a professional looking at it from the outside with the critical eye or throwing myself into it or, <laughs> or whatever. Oh, but yes. In, in Paris, Paris, too, right yes. after the attacks. Yeah. Yes, yes. So do you want to take us through this trilogy? Um, we have also some video clips. So when you want us to show some of the videos, please um, let us know. But maybe we start from Attendance, um, which was the first part of the trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, so in att Attendance, we were... Um, I was really curious how to really sensorily bring out this idea that we are all always participating, whether we are aware of it or not. And so um, that piece really brought people in through the senses and through how we moved the space around and through eye contact, through then eventual contact with the audience, through breaking apart the set, through all the sound being made live and the sound also being made often from the names of the people in the room. Um, and this one was really a question of what does it take to get people from a kind of passive state of receiving and distance to one in which they are willing to stand up. And that for me is a, a kind of political metaphor um, so yeah, maybe now we can show a little bit of the trailer of attendance of the first, uh, I think it's clip A. Yeah, that was at, um, that video is from St. Mark's Church in New York. Um, and uh, yeah, so this piece was really, I mean, each piece in a way is about creating a kind of contemporary ri ritual where we can sense and feel our interdependence. And so throughout the course of the piece, things are constantly being repurposed, like the platform that you see at the beginning is kind of like a sculpture plinth that the audience sits around. Um, and then I come under it and I break it apart <laughs> and it becomes as there's a, you see that it's actually in fact a series of benches that I then pull out like a kind of stage manager mm -hmm. and then the audience sits on the benches. So your butt is where the stage was. And so there's this a lot of throughout these very direct uh, bodily movements that the audience is a part of there then they hold things that are then sort of these objects that the performers use at one point we sing every single person's name that is there that is present so it's like a calling of attendance and then by the end in fact we have people up and we're all in this dance together sort of simple skipping dance and it's been it was very surprising the willingness at the end that people had to join um really like all over the world um 
and we really worked a lot on knowing knowing how to de deliver direction and request and ask in a way that was not like dictator and was not uh, what we say here like kumbaya like too sweet and too like la 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 <laughs> but was was direct and simple and to and to absolutely allow for the no in the room as much as the yes um, but it's but it was surprising especially in that piece how much people craved in fact to the attention and the, the contact hmm. so yeah i think it was also yeah. built into the meeting with uh, with the artist when the dismantling of the stage in the middle starts you already in, are engaging in the performance. So, you know, joining in the mm -hmm. end is just continuation of that dialogue that you had maybe with yourself, like holding something, being there, gradually becoming part of the show, kind of being seduced into, mm -hmm. the, into, yes. the, into the flow of the performance. Um, and the last part mm -hmm. is really like a folk uh, dance type of thing. I couldn't help thinking about the kind of uh, kind of like f uh, traditional folk dances where you use these stripes yeah. and you're like going around. So it had like it resonated a lot into these kind of communal ways of 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 t coming together and 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 finding a joy in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I okay. think it it's, it was interesting to feel the the joy in that piece, which actually felt quite radical to me, uh, because I think joy is like, oh, like you know, <laughs> we're going to make ourselves vulnerable if we allow for that. You know, we're going to be come seduced and then manipulated, or yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to be unthinking. If we if we feel that together, and I think that was really an interesting thing to question. Mm -hmm. Why do I think that? Why do I think that the that art must always be only deconstructing? Um, yeah. And that radical is always with the distance. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. to be able to critically look at something, you have to have some kind of a distance to it. Because here, the distance was mm -hmm. gradually just getting smaller, <laughs> smaller until you were there, <laughs> gradually together, skipping around mm. in in a circle. <laughs> and I have to say, uh, yeah, it's but but it it was it was really like even I with my bad knees, I do, I was like I'm a little bit afraid of participating. You never know how the others are, might stumble into you. <laughs> Uh, but I could feel the the joy of it, the kind mm. of like you know mm -hmm. coming together. And that's a very um, that's a that's a skill to to get everybody to rely yeah. that they are not going to be made that they don't feel fool <laughs> afterwards mm -hmm. that they participated mm -hmm. that threw mm -hmm. themselves into the into the mm. flow of the dance with others. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's certain things that are yeah. taboo in a contemporary dance. Maybe joy and laugh, and some things are, you know, being mm -hmm. funny and mm -hmm. being joyful. Yeah, <laughs> I do all the taboos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, because it's also very funny. The uh, the the performers are just absolutely brilliant in it and uh, making fun yeah, fun right. of themselves. The reflecting on they 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 perform performative selves and and to the audience and uh, yeah so this was 2014 yeah yeah and then you continued the next uh, part of yeah the, do you want to say it the next part sure yeah the next part is called thank you for coming play which um which premiered in 2016 um in fact, right right around the time Trump was elected here. Um, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it was a, it, yeah, well, it had a showing in September at Wexner and then it premiered at BAM in, yeah, in just November. So really just a couple weeks after. Um, and so, yeah, this piece was dealing with, um, it's called play and it, it was much more of a, of a play of a text-based work. Um, although it's really working with the interplay between 
I guess the dissonance in a way between what we do and what we say, between behavior and action, and the kind of um, the dance of language, like the way that we are made up by our, the symbols and the, the way we name things and the way we represent things through language and the ways that we're also undone through those stories and um, the problematics of storytelling. And so a lot of this was about um, playing with language and the audience was in some ways helped write some of it. They, they fill out these note cards uh, that are then used in the work. And a piece of it that was really fascinating to me that we did was we tried this whole section where we recorded one conversation between us, all the dancers, and they learned all the exact phrasing and choreography and did it exactly and actually even said a lot of that original text, but also simultaneously said a different set of text. So it was like this really wild, impossible task, <laughs> um, which I think you see a little bit of in the trailer, but not as much. But in this one, we were also working a lot with kind of archetype and again, like tableaus from various paintings and images. So a lot of the times the image will be different than the text, which will be different than the body is then doing and the sound is doing. And we formed a band among us. So all, none of us were really trained, but we formed a band and learned the instruments and um, it was a wild process. <laughs> um, but maybe we'll show a little bit of that now, that trailer or bit B. So this is the most theatrical one of mm -hmm. the three pieces. It felt mm -hmm. like some kind of a theater in theater, the meta theater, and then everything mixed and layered on top of each other into this wonderful chaos, which kind of make you also love theater, which you sometimes are like, oh, can I take it anymore? <laughs> but the way it was structured, <laughs> it's just kind of like, 
it split it open and it, it just put it together in the, in, in the wrong way, uh, which made it more interesting. And then it split open again. Uh, I remember uh, enjoying that <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> so it was really, yeah, yeah it was, it's about theater most of all, like, for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's about performance and theater. And the performers are all, you know, wearing these thongs, basically backless. And so they had all, all these costumes that they were making themselves. But when they turned around, you just see their butts, you know, which I think is very much like <laughs> the facade, <laughs> the front of theater and frame. And, yeah. And then the second half becomes much more intimate and layered, but it's still kind of fractured and breaking apart um, our language. And yeah, a lot about how we're very mediated now in our language and in our performance. So, yeah. I, I remember we were singing. Am I wrong? Yeah, you were singing in the beginning. <laughs> 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 you weren't just yeah it wasn't just a bad trip <laughs> you were singing and um yeah the audience begins sort of chanting with us the various phrases that are repeated throughout the work and then throughout the piece they are also kind of like a chorus like a greek chorus in in you know traditional theater you're you're cast in that role throughout this work i miss it seeing these pieces is making me just sad in a way i'm missing so much um touching the sweaty back of one of my performers and, <laughs> you know running through the audience wildly that i yeah. remember <laughs> I, I remember your <laughs> presence somewhere behind me and yeah giving the tune yeah so in Comes each of these pieces i'm there and i'm directing and i'm um stage managing and i'm kind of a control freak out of control audience <laughs> out of control direct director jumping up doing too much and demanding too much and which is pretty appropriate to me <laughs> as a maker um so it's interesting because in space the next one then i took away all the performers and it was just me kind of this alone solo director with the audience um, and taking, taking really kind of stripping away a lot of the color and the um, audacity and, you know, jouissance of those other pieces and mm. kind of it, moving into this very white and empty space. Um, and the audience really became like this, they became this place in which I make mm the piece, you know, with them, they make the, they, they, they hold me in this absence in a way. Um, was it meant to be a yeah. solo when you, when you were thinking about the trilogy, was it clear that the last piece will be a solo? It, no, actually it wasn't. I, I thought that the, initially I thought the first would be a dance, the second a play and the mm -hmm. third an installation. And so I was thinking that the installation would involve performance in some way, but that it would be um, another group ensemble work. And after I had made those two pieces, um, and then it, it, I had I'd gone through major life changes like death and divorce. <laughs> and I felt like I couldn't quite function in the same way that I had in um, I, I, really, I literally just kept not scheduling rehearsals. <laughs> I was like, I want, okay, I have to get it together. Like we're going to, we're going to make the whole plan. And then I would just, it was like a fatigue came over me, I think. And I, and I realized slowly, oh, okay, this is, this has to change course. Um, and and it has to be something about this, what's happening with me right now. Um, and so that was, you know, it was frightening to allow for that, but I, I, always, I never wanted to make a trilogy that was rigid. It had to meet the moment and be alive. Otherwise I think it becomes too much of a chore that you're involved in. So. So, and then it became quite interesting to me to remove all these people and to see what was, you know, 
what was there with just me, which I don't actually love that position. It wasn't mm -hmm. something I craved. All eyes on me, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it was quite uncomfortable. Um, but it was really about the mapping of absence and it really being quite close to the process of, of, of um, the one dying and um, the concurrent loss and change that happens to you at the same time in the one living and the one left. And how do we map those absences and what is a figure through not sight, but through all the other senses and through memory. Um, and in a way, the impossibility of resurrection or recreating them ever again. Um, and the attempt to kind of hold, hold one's grief, be held in the loss and hold their, their being in you. And, um, and then really how is, how can there be a ritual for absence and grief and loss that is uh, that is among others because it is such an isolating and private thing often mm. that it is the like you know the our great mm. commonality mm. is this experience <laughs> right I so. mean it's it held its installation uh, feeling from the original mm -hmm. idea so it Absolutely. was staged very much like an uh, an installation and uh, i wonder if you want us to have a peek. yeah let's play yeah yeah Perfect, you were there in the trailer. I know, I <laughs> saw myself. <laughs> I didn't realize that until just now. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this is, this. it's such a strong statement to be there, just to share that space with you and that it becomes so, the air comes so thick somehow in mm. that space because we are like in a, in this space together and and it's full of your labor of mm. grief and pulling through something pushing through something and um uh, this was the work actually that we were supposed to show here yes and we will hopefully we'll be there next year <laughs> exactly this is this yeah. is really like rubbing salt into the wounds i'm sorry it really sometimes <laughs> feels like maybe we should yeah, just I know. come back next year but yeah, but like, it's yeah let's of, just skip over this year i know it's <laughs> it's kind of bittersweet but it's still worth of uh, uh, of, of of a short talk about it um because it's so, it, in some ways, it is so different from the two two other parts. The the playfulness is is n is not there in the same way. As I said, it's more like labor, um, yeah. and and it becomes this different kind of materiality. Whether it's real material like a clay uh, that you are, or or these big bricks that you are, which are obviously very heavy, and you're putting on your body and. Um, you cannot really look at that without starting to to, to feel mm. it in your own body as a spectator. Um. Mm. Yeah, I, I initially I wanted to create these sensory stations where I could recreate the uh, you know the exact sense of pressure on the chest mm. um, or the kind of like sob or the um or the touch and the feel of of the hand of their hand mm -hmm. or um the weight um uh, yeah the weight of their body or the the kind of like sense of um thickness of skin and 
the slam of, of a kind of rage and um, the bitterness and the, yeah, sort of how do I hold all of that and how is that, how is that held or mapped by others? And it's how is what feels so invisible made visible um, in, in not in a linear way, in a kind of a painterly way, like a painting with, without the paint though, <laughs> mm. like, so I was also looking at like a lot of figurative painting throughout history and mm. looking at the ways the body was held and represented all those bodies, which are now ghosts, which are, which no longer exist. And thinking a lot about, um, you know, what is a, what is a body and, and just how it's not what we think it is and how, um, how it's been held in memory throughout time. And anyway, I, I was looking at that. And so the piece actually has this um, line of images that you walk through to get to uh, the piece itself, um, which are sort of like walking through a cave or a procession to the stage. And then throughout the piece, I'm also in reference to those ghosts. So. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the, there's a pulley system that the audience is holding and um, I really need them throughout the work. Uh, mm. yeah. It's also uh, weirdly um, current. I mean, somehow it's just kind of like, it also resonates this, this time, which is about pandemic and loss and uh, like, or, or let's say hate and sense of it, because uh, maybe this is, us in the Western world who are more, maybe for the first time experiencing this kind of uh, fear and uh, and loss um, in a different scale than yeah. what we're used to. And um, it's a, it's, it really is a pity that this is actually the work that people would really, I think it would be like a mm. cleansing, it has a cleansing effect on when you, when, when mm. you are there. Um, through this grief and through this, maybe it's because of the materiality, because it's something like it's, it becomes real. Mm -hmm. That you can work mm -hmm. through something. It's uh, it it's mm. a really um, it's a really lovely experience with all the heaviness of it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I hope that you know when we are back in theaters that that people will. I, I will hold their hands <laughs> and I uh, will touch and I will lay on the ground with my mouth and <laughs> I'll do all these things and it will feel so good and so liberating and um, and maybe we'll taste it differently because we couldn't have it, you know, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll know things anew and be able to really advocate newly for the world that we want because it's so we're in such a liminal time where it's being you know stripped and shifted i hope we're not just grabbing you know at some sort of security but that we can take this vulnerability and 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 uh learn from it and change how we are in some way mm. together yeah. i think we are all hoping that uh you know this these takeaways that we talk about, um, we don't forget them once we get back into the business as usual, um, which of course we are all yeah. waiting to open our theaters and studios and rehearsals and uh, residencies. And it's a, it's a whole world that is, is in a halt right now. Um, also, uh, unfortunately, your, um, your solo museum exhibition was also uh, had yeah. to, to stop in the middle. Um, do you want to say something about uh, that? I mean, that's was, um, it opened in February in 2020? Yeah, it opened in February in 2020. It was open for two weeks before, and it was meant to be open for five months, which was very exciting to me because, you know, as performers, we'll often have this week run or a two week run and to have a work in the world for that long. So we put a version of it online, which you can go and do, um, which I'm quite happy with. And, 
and now I'm thinking about the future of that work, whether that's in, you know, um, uh, other galleries or it's in um, COVID safe spaces mm. outside or done in other ways, because I'm really curious to continue it. Mm. And mm. these guided choreographies I'm going to keep working on and sharing in different ways. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, it's interesting, the, this process of adaptation, um, I think it's like we, we must adapt and we must also be very mindful about adapting too much, <laughs> I think, you know? <laughs> and so like too quickly or too much, like how do we actually really, um, you know, stay connected and yeah, um, yeah, I guess I'm just thinking like, I don't, I'm not interested in losing the, the live space, but I'm interested in these, all these different ways that it can happen. And I think that is a lot of what we're working, we're learning now mm. is sort of like these, you know, spheres and circumference, like waves and circumferences of connection that we can create. Mm. Um, but yeah, I will be the first one in the theater when we're back open also. So, but yes, the, the live, the come on in is on the Walker Art Center website. It's an online experience. And so please go to it and spend time with it. And there's images of the exhibition, um, which I'm quite happy with how it looks also from the outside. So, yeah. Would you like us to take a look into how it looks, we have a video. Ah, yeah, clip. sure, let's look at, well, well, we can watch this clip, yeah. 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 Oops, sorry about that. We couldn't <laughs> find it anymore. Uh, it was a last minute adding, ah, so okay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. We can, we will have it. You can go to the Walker website. I also have, I think, it on my website. Easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, yeah. the 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 maybe the takeaway from that was that it was nice to see people lying and being in this kind of beautifully. Uh, um, arranged rooms where you could really enjoy the the flow of the the, the, the text and the and the audio yeah. description so um yeah. i think everybody had their own experience today so maybe that's all for the better that's what they they remember from this evening their own uh, interpretation of like what they and how far they want to go with your instructions and invitation yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'm very curious what people experience. So if anybody wants to write me or send me a note um, through my website, please do. We are all here together and yet then we all disappear and um, we don't even know who was there. So <laughs> I'm used to brushing at least shoulders in the lobby and <sighs> feeling the energy. And, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the pity now. But, um, yeah, I miss you. Yeah, we miss you too. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. I mean, I think thank it's about you. time to say thank you for you yeah. to take us through this uh, so much uh, work of yours, uh, which we hopefully will see soon live somewhere near here. So, um, yes. Faye, I thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's been a long way for us to try to get you to Berlin. I know, we've been but talking for so long. <laughs> yeah. But I'll see you next year. I'll see you next year, I'm confident. We will. We come yeah. back. We are not going anywhere. Yeah. We will come back. We will dance yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. So from uh, Los Angeles back to Berlin. Um, before we uh, say goodbye or good night or leave you with our, our last artist uh, of today, um, I would like to say a few words uh, about tomorrow's program. 
So tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we will continue with our digital conference, How to Be Together. Please tune in. The discussions will go on uh, till uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow. Um, there will be new speakers, new topics. Please go into either Tanzima August website or Zürich Theater Spectacle. Both of us are, are, um, are putting the program there, so you can you should really use the opportunity. Tomorrow is Saturday, so you don't have to work, so you can maybe invest more time into this conference. Uh, then tomorrow, uh, happy to listen. Our last uh, happy to listen is uh, comes from Brazil, or is about Brazil. Brazil hijacked, and it is moderated by Eduardo Bonito, and it has guests with video performances. So the last happy to listen tomorrow will have also performances by Princess Ricardo Martinelli, Zahi Guayayara and Alice Ripple. So please tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock uh, for the last happy to listen. Um, then also I would like to remind that we have still one weekend and that weekend the outdoor live works are still going on strong. So please uh, go to the website, book a ticket for Ligna, uh, dissemination everywhere. This time everywhere is nearby here and near how to. Um, it's tomorrow on Saturday and Sunday. You know, instructions from 13 artists from all over the world in that audio instruction. So please come and enjoy, uh, um, adventure it. It really is an adventure. You go around the world uh, in one place with headphones. Also, don't forget William Forsythe's untitled instructional series. Um, and I think we have some images for you uh, from around Berlin, um, if we manage to get them on. So if you go there, there's a full list of uh, locations where you can find instructions. And then today's last Meet the Artist. Um, Louis Cavalier, not in person as we had hoped, but through a film and a documentary about her life work. Louis Le Cavalier in Motion is an award uh, winning documentary about the dancer and the choreographer. She took the world by storm in the 1980s and 1990s. She was the dancer of those days. Star of the La 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 Human Steps company from Canada. And ever since, she's kept on dancing. She says she's looking for the perfect movement. She is, and she has established herself as a choreographer who is touring world up till today. Unfortunately, not in Berlin this time, but maybe in the future. So we will finish this evening today with a legendary dancer celebrating the art of a dancer, uh, Louis Le Cavalier. Unfortunately, I have to say this, due to copyright issues, this film will be only available for viewers in Germany. And for those viewers, it is also available in YouTube for the next 24 hours. And afterwards, it is also available for rent online with a small fee till 7th of September. So thanks for joining us today. So we have a film evening together today. So please go and get your popcorn out and get a drink and make yourself comfortable. You are out for a treat with Louis Le Cavalier and we see hopefully tomorrow again.